In this video, we're going to talk about the FIT principle of fitness, F-I-T-T. -T. So if you've never heard of the FIT principle, you would use it to develop a workout program. Make sure that you're covering all the important areas. It's always good to start off with pre-testing. I talked about this in one of my previous videos about the importance of pre-testing. It tells you the areas you need to improve on. So it kind of tells you your basic level of fitness and really the most important thing you're going to get from that is really what do you need to improve on so that way you can design your workout program to improve those areas. It will also tell you your strengths. So let's talk about the FIT principle and how it's going to help help you design a workout program. So frequency, the F stands for frequency. The I stands for intensity. The T, the first T, stands for time. And the second T stands for type. These are all things that you need to consider before you develop a, a workout program. So frequency is is how often. So how often. Intensity is how hard are you going to work. Time is how long are you going to train for for each session. And type would be mode of exercise. Just another way of saying type of exercise. When I say mode. Alright, so how often? So what I normally do with my students is I have them record their dates in the journals. A lot of times their dates are already written in for them so that way it will match my grade book. And then how hard are you going to go for? Well if this was an aerobic class, so if you were training aerobically you would measure heart rate. If this was a weight training class it would be how much weight you're lifting, how many reps you're doing, so for um, something that's more anaerobic it would be like reps or amount of weight for something that would be anaerobic like weight training. So that would be a measure of intensity, but most of my classes I teach, we have a large aerobic component, so heart rate is extremely important for us, and it tells us how hard we're working. Um, time, how long you go for, so normally most of our sessions are at least 20 minutes, and we may break them up into two or three 20 minute sessions, depending on what we're doing. If this was a weight training class, again, even if it's anaerobic, you could still say, all right, I spent 30 minutes lifting weights and then 20 minutes doing aerobics so it's good to have a good mix even if you're in a weight training class so um, this could also be the rest interval you could record the the rest interval but it's easier just to record the amount of time you spent lifting weights and then mode of exercise or the type of exercise is it aerobic is it anaerobic And I really get more specific with my classes, and I have them write down exactly what we did. So in a kickboxing class, we would start off with a routine. And then I, the next day, I'd have them write down the three-minute stations. We always do something different for several days in a row. Um, kicking drill. So I have my students get really specific in, in most of my classes, so I know exactly what we're doing. The reason that's important on their workout log is that we work in cycles of exercise so if you've seen my other videos I talk about this so that way we're doing something different each time we come in we normally start with a a routine at the very first part of the semester after we finish our pre and post or our pre testing and then we might go to like one minute stations three minute stations so forth and so on so we, we would repeat it down here might be um, a step routine, we might do a 
kicking drill here. We might do a boso ball routine. We might do lane stations. And then we come back to the routine and we repeat that. This is just a different form of periodization where we're doing different exercises for a, a complete cycle. So we do cycles of exercise. And this is, we, we use our we use the FIT principle to create a workout log where we can record these cycles of exercise so we know what we're doing on each day and how hard we're working. So let me scroll up here. I've pasted in one of the logs that we use in class so that you kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. And this is the FIT principle applied. So this is the FIT principle applied to the workout log. So notice here we have the date, which would be frequency, how often we're working out, and there's a s several dates listed here. Then we have intensity, so right here is heart rate, so that's how hard we worked. And then we have time, we went for 20 minutes, and then the type of exercise we did a routine that day. So this includes the FIT principle, and a lot of my students don't even notice this, but I've even listed it here for them. Frequency, intensity, time, and type is what I want them to record. And they do this on a daily basis. So typically how a class would work is we would start off with some sort of pretest, telling them their basic level of fitness and where they need to improve so they'll know what they need to improve on. Then we establish this journal and we keep track of what we do every day. And you notice here we started with a routine and so we would do for each day something different. On each one of these days we would do something different for about eight days in a row and eventually we would come back to that routine. But this time instead of only going 20 minutes we would go 25 and we would make the exercises more difficult. So let's say they recorded an average heart rate for the second time we do the routine in the class of 145. And so we do several days of different activities like the three minute step, step routine, kicking drill. And we get back to the routine. So normally we'll at least get about three cycles in in a semester and we go for 30 minutes. And then this time they also record a, an average heart rate of 145. Well, what the workout log will do in the workout logs based off the FIT principle is it will tell them how hard they're working and if they've gotten any improvement before we ever get to the post test. So you see here, we only went for 20 minutes and they recorded an average heart rate of 150. But the second time we did the routine, we made it more difficult and we even went longer, but then they record an average heart rate of 145. So their heart rate has declined. So that means even though the exercise was more difficult than the first time we've done it, this type of exercise has gotten easier for them. And then the third time we do the routine, you, we went for 30 minutes, even longer than the second, and we recorded the same average heart rate. So even though it didn't decline, we went for longer and the heart rate stayed the same, so that's still telling me that their cardiovascular endurance is improving. And that's what I point out to the students. The second time we do the routine and the third time, I have them go back into their journal and look at their heart rates and compare them, and we almost always see this for the majority of the individuals in class. Then after we finish the semester out, we do post-testing. And that allows the students to see how much they improved. So here at the beginning, we found out how much we need to improve. We established a routine based off the FIT principle and we were able to measure our improvement even before we did our post-testing. We could see it on certain activities. They were getting more difficult, but our heart rate was dropping. And here at the end, we did some post-testing and we noticed our improvement. And so if you don't get the improvement you want, you can always go back in and change up this workout. But if, if the workout worked really well for you and you improved in all areas, you can keep that workout and you can continue to improve upon it. So the last thing I really want to talk about here is linking up the FIT principle with your workout routine is extremely important. It tells you a lot about what's going on in the semester. 
If you're teaching a class yourself, this is good to incorporate into your class. It's made my life a lot easier because all these dates are linked to my grade book. So I have the same dates in my grade book. So if a student is tardy, I can write it down on here in the end of the day. I can write in you were tardy and they know. If they were absent that day, I can write in absence because they're going to have a blank space. And so what they have in their journal will reflect what's in my grade book. I'm always big on application. And so this journal gives the student the ability to apply what they are learning. They don't just learn this principle, they actually apply it on a daily basis. So they know how to create a good solid workout program based off the FIT principle. And I'm the same way. If I can't apply it, it's harder for me to remember. But I have the students apply it, and at the end of the semester, I point that out. When we start reviewing for the final, I pick up their journals and say, I explain the FIT principle first, and, and I tell them, you did this every day. You may have not have known it, but you recorded the FIT principle, and you used it in your workout plan every day. So I hope this tied the FIT principle into pre and post testing. At the beginning of the semester you do your pre-test to establish how much you need to improve. Then you use the FIT principle to create your workout log. So that's what this is. Workout journal is what I call it. And that will allow you to see how much you're improving as the semester goes on. And at the end of the semester you do your post testing again and see how much you improved. So I hope this explained the FIT principle and how it should be used in a class, and I will see you in the next